Okay, so hi honeys, how are you? Tanya ni Shylock here and of course Welcome back to my YouTube channel. How are you guys? I hope that you are fine, amazing, popping. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's vlog, I'm going to be sharing about seven different points on how to settle here in Uganda, especially when you decide to come back and live here or stay here or work here. You know, the points I'm going to be sharing, obviously, they are very, very, very absolutely important not to jump any of them because most of the time, I've realized that a lot of people who actually come to settle here after they have been in the Western world, after they have been in the, you know, in Saudi Arabia, in the Arabic nations, most of the time they find it hard to adjust to the life here. So in today's vlog, I'm going to be giving you those points. If the first one and the second one, they are actually not very obvious to you. Hopefully the fifth one will be important. Hopefully the sixth one might be important. And hopefully the seventh one might also be important. But before actually I start uh, those different points, if this is the first time you are watching my face over here, hi there, I'm Tanya Nishailo, I'm a Ugandan beauty and lifestyle content creator. I live in Kampala, Uganda here. And definitely on this channel, you are going to be seeing beauty, a lifestyle, and a lot of inspiring videos on top of that financial videos or business videos. So without any further ado, let us just dive into the first point right now. Don't spend beyond your earnings, your budget, or your savings. Don't, don't, don't. This is the first thing I want to emphasize because I've seen a lot of people, not only here in Uganda, people who come back from Saudi Arabia, people who have never lived here before, and when they come here, they tend to think that our money, since it is uh, very, very little compared to the currencies from the countries they have been to, that they have to spend it nagalariously or negligently, you know? Don't do that. You are going to fall into problems. You are not going to be able to drain up yourself from. So make sure that you make a budget of the money you have Make sure that you actually spend money on things that are important to keep your life in place than things that are actually all necessarily secondary to that. Because most of the time you are going to end up coming here, buying a new car, and yet even you don't have a stable job by then, you are going to reach here, buy a new car, you know, go to different expensive hotels which are actually not in your budget. You know, these hotels are going to take your money. This guy is going to be drinking your money in form of fuel, and yet you don't have a stable job yet. So you are going to end up being very, very poor and bankrupt, and it will be the worst idea why you actually decided to come here, and yet it is from your side of view. So make it a point that you actually look into that very, 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 very importantly. At the end of the day, any penny you are putting out which is not well budgeted for, which is not well planned for it is a gone case this actually brings me to the second point that i want to stress very very absolutely much so if you are going to be staying here for more than a month please and please go ahead and establish up a small business this applies to my girls who are actually working in Saudi arabia in oman in doha and also this applies to any person coming back from europe from America or anything like that, you know. If you are going to, st to be staying here for more than a month, my dear, make sure that you establish a small, small business that can actually supplement your budget, supplement your savings, supplement your time here. Because as I told you earlier on in the last point, every coin you are actually putting out and it is not well budgeted for, it is not well planned for, it's a bond case. But when you are very, very wise and you reach here and you establish a small business and you know that you are putting some amount of money into that business you are very 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 well assured of profit so not only you are going to be able to try to live above your plan but you're also going to be able to earn a little bit of coins that you can actually sponsor you during your stay here in Uganda if you need me to actually sit down and make a a video of different business ideas you can actually do when you reach here and you are going to be staying for a very short period of time let me know in the comment section below definitely i'll make it and yeah 
This brings me to the third point that I actually want to stress very, very absolutely much. This is all about my brothers and sisters. Don't extravagantly spend money on things you want, but definitely spend money on things that you need. You know, this is just a supplement point onto the first point. Don't come here and waste your money on on expensive clothing, on expensive cars, on expensive, you know, treatments, uh, you know, treats. You know, when you know that those things are secondary to your lifestyle, look into your lifestyle. If you don't, if you see that you want to spend money on something very, very out of the blue, you know, at least spend that money on a small business because you are very, very sure that that particular business is going to be able to bring you profits. So make sure that you only spend money on things that are important, you know, food in very, very affordable places that you feel like they fit in your budget, treats that are very, very, you know, uh, budget fitting into your own planning, but don't spend money on things you can actually live without because those things you can actually always and always find them when you have made a little bit much more profit. This brings me to the fourth point. This is all about asking questions as much as you can. Don't make yourself a bank of answers and yet you have not been here for all this long. Every person you meet, make sure that at least you make them your friend. Okay, not all of them, but definitely some of them you see value in them. You know, because when I say the previous, you know, uh, statement I've just said, I'm not meaning even the mad people or people who are absolutely, you know, the opposite of near to normal, make them your friends. But definitely make people your friends in order to ask as much questions as you can. Whenever you are sick, you are going to be able to jump a particular, you know, a, a particular downfall that you actually would have felt in when you did not ask. Ask about where, you know, you can get affordable housing. Ask about where you can actually be safe. Ask about where you can get your hair done. Ask about those simple, simple things in order to prevent, you know, spending out of your budget. Make it a point that you ask as much as you can because I believe that whenever you are sick, you know, and a person who you have asked actually gives you the right information, you are going to be able to save yourself spending money where I wouldn't have spent that particular amount of money. Admin on to that, asking and asking questions most of the time, even admin to that consultation, it is going to be very important, especially for people who are going to be starting up businesses here, known to fail in, you know, in different, you know, losses, in loans and things related to that. This brings me to the fifth point. This is try very hard, my brother or my sister, to adjust to the lifestyle here. The first thing I want to tell you is that the lifestyle here is completely different from elsewhere you are coming from, you know. Time punctuality here is not very good. Jam is like jam. Make sure that you make new friends. Don't stress about things that you cannot control, but just go with the flow. If you are very used to being very, very time punctual, people here, they are not like that, my dear. Make sure that you give yourself time and space to breathe, you know? Make sure that you give your, 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 your body and spirit time and space to breathe. Because at the end of the day, even though you stress like a billion times, you know, people here, they are not very, very time punctual. Jam is like jam, you know? All those different factors that most of the time might bring you stress. So call study pressure about them. Make sure that you just try to fit in, you know. Make it your new normal, you know. Make it your new normal. Don't forget your values, but make sure that you fit in because this is a different community. This is a different social lifestyle. This is completely different. And when you stress and compare the place you are coming from to this place, you are going to be just, you are going to end up just being stressed throughout your stay here, which is not good for not only your health, but also the time you are going to be spending here and also for your wallet. Being very, very curious of your security. Be very curious about your security. The person near to you, the location you are sleeping in, the person you are sharing information with, all that, you know. I love to say that Kampala and Uganda generally it's one of the safest countries in East Africa, though they are bits and bobs, you know. When I say bits and, bits and bobs, I believe you can understand, you know. 
we are not perfect in one way or another, but when you are very curious, you know, of people around you, the place you are in, the things you are eating, the people you are connecting with, you are going to be able to limit even that those, those few bits and bobs to reach you. So make sure that you are very, very curious, people around you, things you are doing, people you are talking to, don't just get out your phone, you know, in those different strange locations such as Owino, Market, Old Tax Park, and a lot of other different places and areas in, uh, you know, in Kampala and a lot of other districts, you know, because I believe such areas, they have high crime rates because they tend to have people who are very, very, you know, dormant and they don't have a lot of things to do. So avoid such, you know, doing such stuff like talking to the phone in such strange areas. Carry your bag at your chest area. This is what I mean when I say carry your bag at your front area. Just like this, you know. Don't carry it at the bag, <laughs> you know. And so don't sit with a body. Someone, it's going to be easy for them to actually take anything they want. But carry it using these trappings up front. Carry your bag like this, not from the back. This is going to actually save you a lot and a lot and a lot of theft, you know. A lot and a lot of theft. Because most of the time, even it's most of the time, this bag here, you can use it to pop in your phone so that you know for sure that you are carrying your bag from the up front and your phone is right here. Yes, so also that is also an added point, especially when you are going to be traveling to different locations within Kampala and a lot of other districts and places. Okay, so you guys, this brings me to the last one. This is a bonus one, I believe. This is avoid drinking and driving in Kampala. I want to talk about this thing because it's very important. If they catch you when you have drunk alcohol and you are on, you know, any road here in Kampala, Uganda, and you are driving, you are going to be facing the charges. The charges are very, very absolutely heavy, you know. Make sure that you don't drink and drive. And when you have drunk, make sure that you have a driver with you. On top of that, just try your best so that you avoid very, very nighttime travels, you know. Traveling at 3 a.m. in the night, traveling at 4 a.m. in the night, you know. Most of the time, those are the deadly hours, you know, because by then a lot of thieves and people who are you know who are looking for three th free things are actually uh they, are, they have their eyes out so make sure that you avoid traveling in very very late hours i'm not saying that don't travel around 12 you know in the night travel but when it comes to one two three those are deadly hours and i believe that those hours that is when a lot of thieves they have their eyes open remember currently we no longer have any curfew make sure that you are in your house at least by 12 you know you have cut off a lot of chances of those different things that would have happened when you are out there thank you very very much you guys for watching today's vlog i appreciate you from the bottom of my heart let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below if you are living in kampala or if you have ever lived in kampala uganda here and you have any other added point that you want you would want to add on leave it in the comment section below myself and a lot of other people who are going to be watching this video in the future and in the current it is going to be very very absolutely important to them let me know what you thought of all the points i've talked about in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to like to comment to share out with friends and family and above all don't forget to like like, you know, I always and always, please, please like the video. It's important to push it a little bit further on any person who's, uh, you know, hoping to travel here sooner or later. Let me meet you in my next one. Tanya and Shiloh switching out. Bye for now.